What is up, MMA fans? Welcome to my channel. This is the MMA Anomaly Show with yours truly, Olin, aka MMA Anomaly. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and smash that bell for notifications. What is up, MMA fans? Olin back at you with another episode of MMA Anomaly, aka the MMA Anomaly Podcast, aka the MMA Anomaly Show. Um, hopefully this mic is working and coming at you nice and crisp and clear. It is a uh, brand new mic that I picked up this weekend. This is actually going to be kind of a test run for that, as well as the new lighting rig. Um, let me know what you think about those in the comments below. If you're watching the video, if you're listening on one of the podcast sites, uh, make sure you drop a review and let me know if you notice any improvements across the, uh, overall quality here. So jumping right into things. We are going to go over the boxing as well as the uh, mixed martial arts fights that took place this last weekend. Uh, we'll go ahead and start off the top of the show with the boxing fight or boxing match. So uh, just the main event is what we're going to go over here. It was one of the biggest boxing matches in history, right? It was Amanda Serrano against Katie Taylor, two really phenomenal women, both great at what they do in the sport. Um, people were definitely arguing over who they thought won. I personally thought Amanda Serrano won. However, because it's boxing, I understand why some people and the judges included saw it in favor of Katie Taylor. Either way, the fans won. That was a fantastic fight. Um, it was a lot of fun. Those girls were going at it. Uh, my only critique or biggest critique, I think, would be three minute rounds. We need to have three minute rounds, right? Uh, women want equality in sport. Let them compete three minute rounds. I think at least one of the women wanted that, right? So I think the rematch should definitely be three minute rounds. And I think if the rounds were a little bit longer in this last fight that took place on Saturday, I don't know that Katie Taylor would have made it out of that fifth round. And now jumping right into the UFC fight card that we had on Saturday. Um, I'm not going to go over the whole fight card. I'm going to keep this video pretty brief, actually. Like I said, this is kind of a test run, or should I say this episode brief? Um, as I said, testing out the mic, testing out the new lights, testing out the whole setup in general right now, kind of. And I also know that I'm going to be doing another video shortly um, in the coming days regarding the upcoming pay-per-view. Obviously, a lot of big fights on there. It's a banger of a card. Um, so, anyways, without further ado, let's jump into the two big fights I want to talk about that happened this last Saturday. So, to start things off, we had Jake Collier versus Andre Arlovsky. Andre Arlovsky, an absolute legend of the sport. If you watch that fight, realistically, he didn't win that fight, but he was given the nod. Um, I, th I thought Jake did everything he needed to to win that fight. Not nearly as much of a Jake fan as I am uh, as Andre Arlovsky. However, I do think that Andre didn't do enough to win that fight by decision the way he did. So anyways, uh, I'd love to hear what you thought about that fight in the comments below if you did watch. Uh, did you actually think that Andre did enough to win? Uh, Drew, if you're watching, I'm sure you'll comment and say that Andre won. So let's hear why. <laughs> um, jumping into the main event, we had... Just two absolute studs, two stars of the sport, in my opinion. We had Rob Font, who has looked incredible, um, even in his last fight, which he lost. I mean, he's just looked absolutely great. His boxing has always been incredible in the UFC and before the UFC, even. So, always look forward to a Rob Font fight. Now, that being said, I did say in my previous video, I thought Chito Vera was going to beat him. I might have been one of the only people that actually thought that. Uh, a lot of people. We're backing Rob Font going into this, even after the weight miss. Uh, I, I just, I really thought that Cheeto Vera had everything he needed to have in order to win this fight. He had all the tools necessary, right? His boxing isn't necessarily quite as good as Rob Font, but his mixed martial arts is better, right? Uh, he has fantastic takedown game. He has great takedown defense. And even though he was outlanded by over a hundred strikes, like Rob Font hit this guy almost 300 times and at the end of this 25-minute fight, it looked like Chito Vera spent 25 minutes riding around in a Mack truck in a big 18-wheeler. Meanwhile, Rob Font looked like for the last 25 minutes, he had been on the receiving end getting run over by a truck for the last 25 minutes. And he outlanded him by 100 strikes. So the significant difference here is, and this is the same reason going back to why I thought Amanda Serrano won the Katie Taylor fight. <sighs> If you're landing a ton of strikes, but they're not doing anything, are you winning the fight? If you're outlanding your opponent, but you're covered in your own blood, are you winning the fight? 
I don't think so. It's called a fight for a reason, right? The guy who takes guy or girl who takes more damage across the distance should be the loser. And call me crazy, call it pride rules. I just think that's how it should be. So that's how it was in the UFC in that main event. I thought that's how it should have been in Amanda Serrano versus Katie Taylor. Amanda Serrano even outlanded Katie Taylor. The argument is that Katie Taylor was landing the cleaner shots and had the cleaner boxing. So again, let me know what you thought about that fight. And uh, do you think that Rob Font's corner should have thrown in the towel? He was busted up. Um, he was down quite a bit, even though he's leading in significant strikes landed and strikes landed somehow. But, you know, he had a gash here. He had a gash here. He had a gash here. He had a, a huge hematoma on the side of his head. It looked like possibly a broken orbital. Uh, there's just There was just so much damage that was taken in that 25 minutes. And that's the type of fight that might change a person, right? Uh, you know, in and outside of the cage. So I, I do look forward to seeing Rob Font bounce, bounce back from that. And I look forward to seeing what changes he makes, if any, because there were some holes that were shown in his game. Um, and Cheeto Vera, I think, is, like I said in my previous video, I believe, one shot away from a title shot or one fight away from a title shot. So I think you give him, uh, you know, number one or number two. He's, he's calling out Dominic Cruz now. I think that'd be a fun fight. I don't think stylistically that's the best fight for Cheeto Vera to take. But if he's game, why the hell not? Let's go. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. So look out on the channel, wherever you're subscribed, whether it's uh, Apple Podcasts or Samsung Podcasts or Spotify or YouTube, wherever you're subscribed. Make sure that you like the video, you rate us, you comment, you do all the online things and make sure that you stay tuned for later in the week for the uh, other episode coming about the pay-per-view. Thanks again, guys. I appreciate all the support and I look forward to seeing what you guys thought of this one. Hopefully the mic is better.